Hello and welcome to my tutorial about setting up Visual Studio Code to work with C++, CMake and WX widgets. For this to work, you will need CMake, a compiler and build tools, and of course Visual Studio Code. Please watch my CMake tutorial where I explain how to install the required tools on Windows, Linux and Mac and how to configure CMake for WX widgets. Alright, let's see how it all works, starting on Windows. In Windows, you need to remember to launch Visual Studio Code from the proper command prompt. If you just use the desktop icon, for example, you'll notice that you have no access to CMake or the compiler tools. That's because the environment variables pointing to these tools are not set. What you need to do is to launch the developer command prompt for the Microsoft compiler. It can be found in the Visual Studio group in the start menu. After running Visual Studio Code from the developer command prompt, we have access to CMake and other build tools. Let's see how the configuration works. Clone the GitHub repo from this video description and open it in Visual Studio Code. You will need a few plugins, most importantly the C++ plugin from Microsoft, so remember to install it from the extensions panel. The project is configured so that when you press F5, a chain of tasks is run. First, we use CMake to configure the project and then to build it. These are the same commands that I used in the CMake tutorial, simply translated to tasks.json format. In the C++ properties.json file, you can find three configurations, each for a different operating system. You can change the current configuration in the bottom right corner of the window. In our case, all these settings are needed for IntelliSense and code navigation only, because the compilation process itself is handled by CMake, and CMake controls which compiler is used, what directories to include, etc. But since we want working code navigation and code completion in Visual Studio Code, we need to tell it where to look for includes and how to parse these. The first part is done by pointing the include path to our build directory, where CMake downloads and builds WX widgets. To ensure correct parsing of this includes by the IntelliSense engine, we also need to specify the defines field here in the JSON. During the compilation process, these defines are set by WX widgets CMake configuration, but the editor does not have access to this process results. That's why we need to mirror these defines manually here. Let's explore this a little bit. Every WX widgets header includes the setup header file. This file acts as a kind of proxy ensuring the correct configuration header is included for a given platform. If you remember, we added the debug define for the Windows configuration and you can see the IntelliSense recognizes this define and highlights the correct part of the ifdev processor directive. If we change the configuration to Linux, you will see that the first part of the ifdev is now grayed out and there are squiggles under the include directories because Visual Studio Code cannot find proper setup header for a given platform. Now why is that? Pay attention to the wx suffix constant. Because we set both debug and unicode defines, the IntelliSense recognizes wx suffix is equal to ud. This constant is then used to build a wx lib subdir include path which points to this final setup header. Note the U and D letters in the directory. Because we set the correct defines in the C++ JSON configuration file, the IntelliSense is able to find the correct path for the setup header. So the defines field is crucial for making Visual Studio Code's IntelliSense work correctly. And if you experience any problems with IntelliSense, I suggest you start here. As you can see, we are able to navigate the code using control and click. We can navigate inside headers, go to class definitions, and so on. If you set your C++ properties correctly, but still experience problems with IntelliSense, you can reset the database, open command palette using Ctrl Shift P, and select Reset IntelliSense database. Next configuration file is named LaunchJSON. Here we have three configurations for each platform. 
you can change the current launch configuration in the bottom left corner of the window. Let's try debugging the code. We will set the breakpoint and hit F5 to run the code. As you can see, the debugging works, program execution is paused at the breakpoint, and we were able uh, to examine the symbols from the code. One very useful setting when developing C++ programs in Visual Studio Code is code auto-formatting on save. This is a feature of the C++ plugin and can be set in settings JSON. As you can see, I can type the code without caring too much about white spaces and the plugin automatically reformats the code when I hit Ctrl S to save the file. The last plugin I want to show you is the Tab Out plugin. It's a little tool that makes typing a bit faster, allowing using the Tab key to get out of auto-generated closing braces, quote marks, etc. You do not need to move your hands to arrow keys, just hit Tab and the cursor gets past the closing characters. Alright, let's see how this all works in Linux. You will need the plugins I mentioned before, along with the code LLDB plugin for debugging. The code navigation works perfectly, just like on Windows. Same for auto formatting on save and tabbing out of quotes and braces. Here's also the debugging with breakpoints and watch symbols. This also works on Mac. After installing the needed plugins, you can explore IntelliSense, code navigation, you can check out the auto format and save feature, or the ability to tab out of quote marks.
When you run your program using function f5, you will see the debugging works as well. One thing though, on Mac you will need to manually click the program icon to bring it to the front. Alright, that's it for the tutorial. Thank you for watching, please like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.